Welcome to video two. I'm going to go into more detail about the actual waterway survey technique during this survey. To recap, the survey is a walking transect along a one kilometre stretch of river or canal. You will have been assigned a survey site or you'll have chosen a new waterway site yourself. Whichever way you're going, you will be asked to go down and visit your site during the daytime to map 10 new survey spots or to actually find the previous 10 survey spots mapped by the previous surveys team if you have taken on an old waterway site. And the actual purpose of the survey is that in the month of August, you'll go down for two nights and survey each of the 10 survey spots for four minutes each, where you'll be actually counting the number of times a dog betting spot passes you by. So you'll be asked to complete two surveys, one in the first half of August and then repeat in the second half of August. You will be surveying in pairs and you're going to be using a bat detector and a torch. The bat detector is there to alert you to the typical dry clicking noises of a myotis bat, which is the family group the Dobettons are belong to. And a torch is there to typically show you the skimming flight pattern of a Dobettons bat. So it's very important to actually watch a Dobettons video to see what I'm talking about. Now you don't need to have any experience with regards to using bat detectors, but I do recommend that you actually listen and watch the different video files that I've actually prepared for this, and also including the one on the Pipistrel's bat and how to use a bat detector. This will build up your, your confidence in using a bat detector. And I do recommend going down and having a wee practice using your bat detector before the actual survey in August. Now the survey, it's 10 survey spots, four minutes each. So it's a 40 minute survey and it's undertaken 40 minutes after sunset. And between the walking, between the survey spots, it will take about 80 minutes to complete the survey. Now it is a nighttime survey, so it's very important to visit your site during the daytime so you're familiar with it and have head torches to give you safe passage going from survey spot to survey spot. We have over 600 waterway sites registered uh, that have been previously surveyed for Dub Benton's Bat. And these free sites are actually open every year for new volunteer teams to take on a site. We do prefer people to actually take on older sites because the more information we have on these sites, the more robust our data is for doing population trend analysis for the Dog Benton's Bat. So this is an example of one of the sites. This is the Nine Eye Bridge over the River of Blackwater as it flows out of Black Ramar. So this is one of my waterway sites. So all of my 10 survey spots are actually downstream of the bridge, literally because that's the only option I had. When I first set up this, I went out, I walked both sides of the river and decided which side was the most easily accessible. And then I mapped my 10 survey spots. Now I start mapping at the bridge and worked my way down. Um, but for the actual survey, my survey spot number one is the one that's furthest away from the actual bridge. And that means when I'm going out for my survey in August, I'm walking in relative brightness down to survey spot one. But by the time I'm finished my survey, 80 minutes later, I only have a two minute walk back to my car. That's a good hint. So when you map your sites, whichever survey spot is furthest away from your parked car, have that as survey spot number one. So like it's very important to actually go out and look at these sites during the daytime. Get familiar. If you need to remap some of the old survey spots, that's no problem. Just fill out the daytime survey form accordingly. And um, if you are mapping a new site, you have free will and actually how you actually prepare your walking transit. So the next few slides are a series of different video clips of me down at the Nine Eye Bridge describing the daytime survey form and the nighttime survey form. Welcome. So today we're going to talk about the daytime survey form and this is the blue survey form in your volunteer pack. So we're here at the Nine Eye Bridge which is over the River Blackwater. This is one of my waterway sites and this site here behind me is my survey spot number 10. So it's very important that you take some time to come and look at your site during the daytime. If you were taken on an old site, you will need to find the 10 survey spots that were previously surveyed. If you're mapping a new site, you will need to map your 10 survey spots during the daytime. So this is my survey site. This is spot, survey spot number 10. All of my sites are located downstream. I picked this as my survey spot number 10 because it means when I'm finished it, 
I've literally just had to go back to my car two minutes away. So it's the shortest distance back to my vehicle in the hours of darkness. So that's a really good tip. So you try to organize that in relation to your survey site. Now I'm just going to describe it. It's very important on your actual form that you give me good descriptions. So just in case you're not participating next year or in a few years time, that another volunteer team can actually take on the site. So in relation to this survey spot number 10, you can see that my survey spot is literally beside the silver railing. Okay, so that's where I enter, get close to the river edge, and that's where I'm going to do my survey. Across on the other side of the river, I'm going to say that there is an EPA monitoring point. So there are two good descriptions to allow me to find that survey spot again, or another volunteer team to find that survey spot side of the daytime survey form is some information that we require regards to the habitats. This is just for part of our analysis. So there's near side, far side, near side, far side and so forth. And these are in relation to trees, hedgerows and reeds. So looking at survey spot number 10 here at the Nainai Bridge, you can see on the near side where I'm standing to actually do the survey, there are no trees, no hedgerows or reeds. So I won't be ticking any boxes. On the far side, there are some tall, immature trees. So I'll be taking the tree section in relation to that. Down here, there are some broad habitat categories. So we're standing in the lowland uh, improved grassland fields, and that is the general habitat for the last five of the survey spots of this transit. While the first five survey spots are along the edge of a conifer plantation. So they're the two broad habitat types that I'll be taking for this survey form form is the nighttime survey form so I'm just going to go through that a wee bit. So on it you will be asked to actually fill in your name, address and your other contact details. In relation to your waterway site, the grid reference which I will supply if it's an old site, the site name which is generally the bridge so here is the Nainai bridge, the waterway name which is uh, River Black Water, whether it's an SAC or an NHA again I can assign those sort of categories. And then in relation to your bat detector skills, we're going to ask you how long have you actually used the bat detector fur and how would you grade your actual skills. So you just put all those details in. And then there's two sections. This is for survey one, which is undertaken the first half of August. And then you come back in the second half of August to repeat the survey. So as you do your survey spots, how many dog buttons back passes, how many onshore dog buttons back passes. So it's important to watch the video on actually demonstrating the survey. Now in relation to the back of the actual form, we have a section in relation to lighting. And if there is lighting, like at this particular site, there is no lighting at all, so that will remain blank. But on some of the sites, there is lamps along the actual uh, waterway site, so the street lights. So you literally tick whether the street lights are on the side that you're actually surveying or on the far side. And if at all possible, let me know what colour the actual light is, whether it's the white light or a yellow light or the more orange, deep orange lights. So there's three different categories for that. And then in relation to your waterway, you're going to give me a little more description on how wide is it. So just an estimate of the average width of the actual river. And then in relation to the actual um, amount of vegetation is actually along the actual edge. So in relation to this particular site, about 70% of it has trees along the edge of it. So I'd fill that in accordingly. And then if you do come across other wildlife, we, if you see barn owls or an otter or any sort of wildlife, do fill it in and we'll actually uh, send that data to the NBDC and bird watch out. For the survey, you're going to be for the survey, you're going to be using the heterodyne bat detector. So this is a tunable bat detector. It's going to be tuned to 35 kilohertz. Now the dog buttons bat can be heard from anywhere from 25 all the way to up to 80 kilohertz. But we tune to 35 to reduce interference from other bat species, especially the pipistrels, which are very likely to be along your river while you're doing your survey. So the purpose of the bat detector is just to alert you to the actual typical dry clicking noises of a myotis bat. And then with your torch, you're going to illuminate the actual individual as it's flying across the surface of the, of the water. 
So it's very important to watch the actual video demonstrating the survey as is done at my Now I've talked a few times about myotis bats. So there are three species of myotis bats resident in Ireland. The Dobetans bat, which is the one that we're focusing on, the Naturis bat and the Whiskered bat. Now on a Hedgeline bat tether, all of them sound the same. They have those dry clicking noises and can be heard from 25 up to 80 plus kilohertz. So what we're actually doing is we're using the back detector to alert us and to be able to actually listen to those dry clicking noises. But this is where the torch comes in very important because the Daw Betten's bat has a very unique flight pattern. It skims across the surface at 30 centimetres height. So the torchlight shining across the surface of the water Typical stand that you should take in relation to holding your bat detector and your torch. This allow you to hear the myotis bats and be able to see the skimming daub and spot as it goes across the surface directly in front of you at your survey spot. A sure daub and spot pass and an unsure daub and spot pass. So the sure, you've heard it and you've seen it. The unsure is you've heard those dry clicking noises, but you didn't see a skimming individual bat. It may have been too quick or it may be that the river is too wide and it could be on the far side, but we're not fully sure. So when it, you're not fully sure it's a dog bat and spot, you tick there. So I'm just going to let you listen to the video now. Typical stand that you should take in relation to holding your bat detector and your torch. This allow you to hear the myotis bats and be able to see the skimming dog bat and spot as it goes across the surface directly in front of you at your survey spot. Now it's actually very important to watch the other video clips. There is a video on how to use a bat detector uh, in relation to listen to pipistrels. This is very important to actually build up your sonic memory and listen to other common bat species that may most likely will be present on the site. And this will give you a bit more confidence to watch your hearing and seeing when you're doing your own survey. And then there's, a, there's an actual demonstration of a four minute slot of doing an actual survey, demonstrating the counting and number of times a uh, a dog buttons flies by within that four minute slot. So please do watch all the video clips and um, go have a practice, build up your confidence, build up your sonic memory and enjoy the survey. Thank you.